the most gangster Marine of all time, Dan Daly. Oh, what do you what do you got for us today, Fat Electrician? I'm ready. All right, go ahead and make your prediction now. Who would win in a fight? 200 Kung Fu practitioners with melee weapons or one Marine with a machine gun? Uh, that's easy, the Marine. Today we're talking about the most gangster Marine ever. A man so remarkable that General Lejeune himself would declare him to be the most outstanding Marine of all time. Legend. A man that was so fierce on the battlefield that General Smedley D. Butler, one of only two Marines to ever receive the Medal of Honor twice, would declare him to be the fightinest Marine he ever knew. Ladies and gentlemen, the only other Marine to receive the Medal of Honor twice Sergeant Major Dan Daly. Mm -hmm. Born in New York on November 11th, 1873, Dan Daly would grow up competing as an amateur boxer as well as working as a paper boy. And while working as a paper boy might seem like the useless details you throw in at the beginning to mm -hmm. humanize the main character, in this case, it's anything but because oh. him working as a paper boy would create a butterfly effect through time that would change the US military as a whole. Oh. You see, you gotta remember that this is the late 1800s and information and news didn't spread the same way it does today. So right. working as a paper boy back then meant that he always got the newspaper meaning that he had more information at his fingertips than 99% of the population because that's of really weird to think about actually like he's he's really not wrong and tech and e even you know 10 10 20 years ago we had we communicated completely different than we do nowadays so 1800s right no yes it's it, it, just mm, 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 mm of this, he would be able to closely follow the exploits of future President Theodore Roosevelt and his famous Rough Riders all throughout the Spanish-American War. And this would go on to be his inspiration to join the U.S. Marine Corps, hoping that he too would be able to fight in the Spanish-American War. So that's exactly what he would do mm, on... In, hmm, a smart Marine. What, what do we think in chat? Is is this the uh, is is this the mix? The, the forbidden cocktail, if you will? The, the, the smart Marine... Nah, not saying Marines aren't intelligent. I could hand a I could hand a group of Marines a single project and probably two bottles of alcohol each. And I could say I need this done and I could expect it to get done within the next 48 hours. We're, we're not going to talk about about the cost required to get there. But I could expect it to be done. <laughs> January 10th, 1899, when Dan Daly would enlist in the United States Marine Corps at the age of 16 years old, coming Legend. in at only five foot six and 135 pounds. But hey, as the old adage goes, it's not about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about the size of the fight in the dog. You yeah. see, the real problem here wasn't his stature, but the fact that he joined a fight in the Spanish American War, oh. and the Spanish American War ended on December 10th. 1898 exactly one month prior to his enlistment date Rough. but the news hadn't spread that far yet so he ships off to training anyways oh, so no. fast forward he finishes up training realizing the spanish american war is over he's kind of like meh i mean the spanish got off lucky can't help it i mean <laughs> let's face it i'm gonna get the action i'm looking for at some point right this is america we've been a country this this it reminds you of the, the 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 manslayer bit from la noir right this is america <laughs> god Oh, history is so interesting to look in hindsight because it's like, oh, Spanish American War ended. You know, what going into 1900, what is the next great conflict going to be? Oh, I don't know. Definitely not near what? 19. Was it 1918? I think it was 1718, right? It was World War One? Oh, God, it's been. I, ugh, I'm making a fool of myself. It's been way too long since I. World War One is the one that gets a little fuzzy to me because we, we have like in Russia, there was the Bolshevik Rebellion about that time and like. 1911 ish i think there was a lot of a lot of stuff happened when 1900 hit let's put it that way country for like 124 ish years at this point we've been not in armed conflict for all of like 14 18 thank you 45 seconds at yeah. this point surely something's gonna pop up soon so he ends up getting put <laughs> on ship duty over in the asianic fleet on the uss newark and sure enough like after a month of being there the boxer rebellion breaks out and guess whose ship is the closest one to be able to respond oh, ho, ho. dan daly there we go. Real quick oversimplified explanation of what the Boxer Rebellion is in case you have absolutely no idea. At this point in time, China had really just been opened up to the rest of the world uh -huh. and foreign influence is just flooding in. Yeah. You have Western businesses going in there trying to make money. You've got Western governments going in there being like, hey, you guys want some democracy? And then you What's had missionaries democracy? going in there also trying to spread Christianity. And all of this influence came so fast, so quick that a large portion of the Chinese population 
felt that it was too much, too soon, and they started to push back and started a nationalist movement. Part huh. of this nationalist movement was a bunch of young men that practiced kung fu. Now, to somebody from the West, kung fu looks an awful lot like shadow boxing, so they just referred to these young men as boxers, hence the term boxer rebellion. Oh, these boxers okay. got together, started their own little club called the Society of the Righteous and Harmonious Fist, Ooh. and then proceeded to run around beating the shit out of- Okay, but why they got the drip though, chat? Why they got the drip? That that is like you hit like the mid to late game in a video game and you expect this to be like the elite units. They got the drip. On beating the shit out of and or killing every foreign diplomat, businessman, and missionary they could find. Wow. And it is at that point that the Marines get sent in. So Private Daly and the rest of the Marines show up to Peking, China, which would later go on to become known as Beijing, the capital of China, at which point they promptly and immediately take over a large legation center on the southern border wall of the city uh -huh. known as the Tartar Wall. They then gather up all the refugees they can find, get them inside the legation center, and set up a defensive perimeter uh -huh. things are going well now we're just waiting for reinforcements right. problem hours and hours go by the reinforcements don't show up and it's about to be dark out so at mm -hmm. this point the marine leadership's thinking like hey the reinforcements are definitely on the way they wouldn't just leave us here which means the reinforcements have gotten lost because i mean let's face it if there was ever a time or a place where the directions of go to the giant building on the big fucking wall wasn't specific <laughs> enough, it would be in China, right? I mean, they're known for their big-ass walls. It's kind of their thing. So they're lost out there. We need to go find so them. So fun fact about the Great Wall of China, actually. So if I understand it correctly, wasn't it that shifting the amount of materials to actually construct the Great Wall didn't it actually affect uh, Earth's orbit or rotation? Some, something in that, right? Weird random facts that Kip retains in his head. I know that actually, like, when, um, it's the big one over in China, the big dam. Why can't I remember the name of it? It's the really, it's the really big dam over there. And, uh, it, which actually ha held a lot of news in the early 2000s. And, like, excavating and unearthing stuff actually had, a, uh, had effects on certain like earth orbital things from my understanding someone someone's probably gonna know what i'm talking about in the comments wild to think about and before nighttime otherwise they're gonna get ambushed by like a thousand of these kung fu guys and they're all gonna get killed so we're all gonna leave Three go find Thank the you. reinforcements and come back private daily you're gonna stand guard here by yourself now oh, no. i don't know what the logic was behind this i don't know if it was like fuck private daily he's the new guy he can have a <laughs> shitty job or if it was like hey private daily's a new guy this mission's really dangerous let's leave him here where it's safe or maybe they knew he was the main character and that he had plot armor i have no idea Probably. either way private daily is now effectively playing goalie for america for all of these refugees so sure enough like an hour after all the other marines leave hundreds of boxer rebels show up and they're looking for a fight now wow. a couple of them have guns like muskets and stuff really outdated weaponry by and large they're all carrying traditional chinese martial arts weapons like swords bow staffs what have you some uh -huh. of them are even just rocking the old meat mittens but they're looking for a fight either way <laughs> yeah. and this is shaping up to be one of the most ridiculous battles of all time i mean this is the type of stuff you get drunk at the bar and ask your buddy like hey do you think you could take on all 300 Spartans if you had a machine gun? Like, that's exactly what's about to go on here. I oh, mean, in no. one corner, you've got an 18-year-old Marine with a machine gun, and in the other corner, you have 200 martial artists with, like, bow staffs and shit. You okay. Pause, champ. Okay, but hear me out. What about the Navy? How, how would the Navy deal with this? That's my that's my curiosity. I ha had some people comment about the Navy recently. Got, got to show some Navy love. How, how would you handle this, Navy? I'm curious. Literally have gun fu versus kung fu, okay? Yeah. And here's the kicker with the entire thing. The Society of the Righteous and Harmonious Fist legitimately and wholeheartedly believes that their martial arts training has made them impervious to bullets. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> so this entire horde of kung fu fighters just starts running at daily as fast as they can as he opens fire with his machine gun and they fight well into the night the rest of the marines were a couple miles away they found the reinforcements but now it's too dark for them to travel in this rioting city at night safely so they've adopted a little defensive position uh -huh. and they're just holding position until daylight they're literally forced to just sit there and listen to the machine gun fire and the yelling and the screaming and machine gun fire machine gun fire chat just mentions the navy wouldn't deal with it they'd sail away kung fu does not mean you can swim a thousand leagues <laughs> oh my god 
Navy. Oh, the legends. Fire. And then suddenly the machine gun runs out of ammo. And then there's bolt action rifle fire. Bolt action rifle fire. He gets the machine gun reloaded. There's more machine gun fire. Uh -huh. And this goes on for hours. And then it progressively just gets slower. And there's less machine gun fire and less screaming and less machine gun fire and less screaming. And then suddenly it no just way. stops. At this point, the Marines have to accept the fact that their friend has just died courageously in battle, fighting an entire mob by himself because they left him alone. And all the civilians that they've been tasked with protecting are going to be slaughtered. And now, look, I don't have military experience. I don't like the closest I have is that both my grandfathers, like one served in World War II, the other, I think, served in Korea. No, I think he served in Vietnam, actually. And like, like so i'm I'm not a military person right i, I don't I, I didn't go to basic i'm a civvy i know you should not leave the the marines unsupervised <laughs> that's when that's when the magic happens <laughs> all they can do is sit there and wait for the sun to come up so the sun comes up and the marines start making their way back to the legation center but they're kind of dragging their feet because well they know what they're going to find. They're really just there to recover the remains of Private Daly. He's going to be smoking, and make sure that those are taken care of. And they start making their way there. And as they get closer, they're like, man, D Private Daly really took out a lot of these guys. That's impressive. And they get closer and like, holy shit, he took out a ton of these guys. This is the most aerodynamic mass grave I've ever seen. And they get to the top of the wall and there's Private Daly smoking, smoking. his yep. pipe, leaning up against his machine gun. And they're like, holy shit, yep. you made it. He's like, yeah. What? Yep, yep. He... I'm going to take that W because he was smoking after that. It, it's it's like it's like the post segs cigarette chat, right? I, I assume that this is how this works in, in the in the uh, in the Marines. I'm sure some Marines can comment and uh, corroborate that. Oh, my God. Why wouldn't I? Well, we heard the machine gun stop firing and we just assumed that you'd been killed. He's like, no, 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 no. no. I only quit firing because they quit coming. Dan Daly has effectively pulled off the impossible. He has single-handedly defeated 200 rebels by himself, no saving way. all of the civilians, as well as saving the day. All the Marines are like, holy shit, we're going to nominate this guy for the Medal of Honor because this is incredible. All the businessmen and the delegates are like, oh my God, we've seen what one Marine can do, and now we've got 1,200 Marines. We're definitely going to make it out of this alive. Oh my God. Chat just, chat just says they can confirm to they can confirm the post sex cigarette. Oh, my God. Hooray. And all the missionaries are like, oh, my God, this is not <laughs> what we meant when we said we wanted to make these people more holy. Shortly after this, Dan Daly would be awarded his first Medal of Honor for the battle. First. And then he would go on to continue serving in the Marine Corps as if nothing had happened. First okay, medal. fast forward 15 years. Now, Gunnery Sergeant Daly has been involved in every military conflict the U.S. has for the past two decades. Wow. He is one of the most experienced combat veterans in the entire U.S. military, and he is a living legend in the Marine Corps. Uh -huh. And on October 24th of 1915, Gunnery Sergeant Daly would find himself leading a platoon of men through Haiti during the Cacos Rebellion. Just after his entire company would cross a river, his entire company would be attacked on all three sides by over 400 Cacos rebels, Ooh. forcing them to retreat back into the river. And while doing so, the horse carrying the crew served machine gun would be shot and sink to the bottom of the river mm -hmm. as the remaining Marines continued to cross the river before adopting a defensive position to repel the attack until nightfall. Right. It is now pitch black outside. I mean, to be fair, it's like being struck from three sides after fording is is not necessarily a good position to be in to be fair and gunnery sergeant daly knows as soon as the sun comes up they are going to get attacked again and the only chance they have is to get that machine gun back from the bottom of the river man so is a juggernaut by himself in the dark of night goes all the way back to the river and just begins diving to the bottom of the river trying to find this dead horse with the machine gun strapped to it and after hours of trying he finally finds this horse manages to go down untie the machine gun come back up for air go back down again getting pieces ammunition the gun itself the tripod he gathers up all of this stuff gets it out of the river and then straps it to his back and carries it back to his men bear in mind that is over 200 pounds of equipment and this guy is 5'6", 135 pounds but he gets it done anyways now marines believe in a couple things when it comes to a gunfight just this man is built different oh is this gonna be the uh 
Is this going to be the the 45? Like, don't bring anything under a 45. I, I think I know some of these, I think. I've seen Number them in one, passing. bring a gun. Number yeah. two, bring friends with guns. <laughs> Number three, decide to be aggressive enough quickly enough. If you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that he is not about to use this machine gun for self-defense. He's about to use this machine gun for self-offense. First thing in the morning, he gets his men together. They launch an attack first, scattering the enemy into the jungle, retreating, and Daly has effectively saved himself and all of his men earning himself his second Medal of Honor. Fast forward two years, June 1st, 1917. It's World War I, and Daly is now a first sergeant, leading an entire platoon of young, inexperienced Marines into the Battle of Bella Wood. If you huh? don't know the Battle of Bella Wood, the Germans are just rampaging through France, making a beeline right towards Paris. And at Bella... Oh, so this was post Magino line, right? Oh. Yeah, that's not good. Would the U.S. Army, the Marine Corps, the French Army, and the British Army all get together to stop the German military in their tracks? Now, this made it not only a strategic battlefield, but a symbolic battlefield, uh -huh. because how dare you stop the mighty German military? Now they're going to hit back twice as hard just to prove that it was a fluke. Because of this, right after they stopped the German military on June 1st, the French military is like, okay, we stopped them. Let's take the W and head back to Paris, and we'll fight from there. We don't want to get slaughtered in this wood line by the Germans because they're pissed. Oh, Maginot was World War II. Thing. Oh, my bad. Hist getting the two mixed up. My bad. And it is at this point that the Marine leadership famously responded by saying, and I quote, retreat. retreat. Hell, we just got here. <laughs> and then the Marine Corps pretty much dons their gas masks, fixes bayonets, and proceeds to fight their ass off for the next 26 days straight. Me remember, like, this was like, we still had, like, chemical weapons just, like, being the new hot new hotness, right? World War One is just it's it's dirty it's 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 disgusting it is savage okay here's what i need you to understand on paper the marine corps should absolutely not win this fight they are both outnumbered and outclassed the german military is one of the most veteran fighting militaries uh -huh. on the planet at this point in time and the yeah. marine corps is primarily comprised of a bunch of 18 year old kids that have never seen combat no, however leading those 18 year old kids is a bunch of fucking badasses like dan daly okay this video started with him being a paper boy from new york he is now a 45 year old man with two medals of honor that has been in the marine corps since he was 16 years old this man is a grizzled veteran that has been there done that and has a t-shirt and he is about to don his plot armor and fuck shit up so the battle of bellawood kicks off on june 1st pretty much immediately first sergeant daly's lieutenant gets shot and he is now out of the fight yeah. okay okay if you don't know what that means the officer is the one guy on the battlefield that sort of kind of pretends like he gives a fuck and he is now gone the regulator is off the war machine and first sergeant dan daly is now in charge of his entire company unopposed shit. fast forward june 5th german artillery strikes the ammunition depot lighting everything on fire uh -huh. dan daly leads his entire platoon in sets the fire out prevents all the ammunition from exploding saves the entire battle fast he's he's just he is just built legendary forward five days june 10th the german machine gun squad would try to advance on daly's company daly would get up by himself with nothing but three frag grenades and his colt 1911 using the three grenades to disable the machine gun before approaching shooting their commanding officer killing him and taking the other 14 germans as prisoners of war fast forward a couple of hours that's some shit you'd see in an action movie that is that is just that's just a casual day for this man. Like, wow. Wow. It's still June 10th. Dan Daly looks around at the faces of the young men that he's leading through this battle, and they're looking tired. They're looking like this is the worst time of their life. And it is at this point that Dan Daly decides that he needs to get aggressive enough quickly enough. Uh -huh. This battle's effectively been a stalemate for the last 10 days, and he's had enough of this bullshit. Yeah. So he gets up walks right out into the open in this wheat field that's functioning as no man's land between the marines and the germans he looks at the germans line turns around looks at his marines and yells come on you sons of bitches do you want to live forever before charging <laughs> at the german line all of his marines that's dan fucking daily we're gonna follow him yeah. so they charge too in an act of pure hyper aggression dan daly's company would catch the germans off guard and would actually manage to punch through their line causing all the other Marines to become hyper-aggressive and attack as well. The, 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 we have the bloodlust uh, passive buff has now been activated. <laughs> just like, excuse me? The fact that this like, it's just so unexpected as a tactic. Just the Germans just like, I'm sorry, he's fucking doing what? This is no man's land. He shouldn't be there. We have the spicy air. What's happening? And he just, 
they, they, they just punch through. Just absolute insanity. Effectively setting off a chain reaction that would lead to the Marine Corps pushing the Germans all the way out of Bella Wood over the course of the next 16 days, where on June 26, American High Command would receive a single telegram, and I quote, Woods, now Marine Corps entirely, <laughs> giving America its first win in World War One and the Marine Corps its new moniker. Due to the blatant hyper-aggression of the Marines, the Germans began calling them the Teufelhunden, or the Devil Dogs. Uh -huh. And it's all because of the actions of First Sergeant Dan Daly. After the Battle of Bella Wood, Daly would continue to serve throughout World War I until on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the Germans would surrender, effectively ending World War I, which is why in America we celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th, which is also, by sheer coincidence, I'm sure, Dan Daly's birthday. The guy's the main character. Legend. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yes. So then, because Dan Daly was like the badass at the Battle of Bella Wood, he gets put up for yet another Medal of Honor, potentially becoming the first man in American history to pull off the Medal of Honor hat trick, getting the three-peat. Absolutely wow. everybody that was there that day all signs off on it. His men, his chain of command, they do the paperwork, they send it off to DC to get this man his medal. Then the political side is like, no, absolutely not. We don't care if he earned it or not. It's not about getting what you deserve. It's about doing what we think is fair and nope not touching it I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole I'm not touching it i know there's service members that watch me i'm gonna let them i'm gonna let them touch that i ain't going near that <laughs> we don't think it's fair that he should get three medals of honor so we're just not going to give it to him because we said so go fuck yourself so instead they go ahead and they give him the distinguished service cross and the navy cross which if you don't know both of those are like tied for the second highest military honor because apparently second plus second equals first <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Anyways, so he gets nah. those instead. And then, bear in mind, this is 1919, right after World War One. Uh -huh. Like, a month later, in 1919, the military creates a new law that you're only allowed to earn one Medal of Honor. Okay, Dan Daly is so fucking gangster, they literally had to change the rules on how many times you're allowed to achieve the highest honor in the military. I, I, I will definitely uh, state my lack of understanding on this. I, I have no real point of context for if this was a good decision or not and i am not a uh not military personnel i feel i am not qualified to really speak on this after World War I, he would retire as a sergeant major, having turned down becoming a commissioned officer on multiple occasions, citing that he would rather be an outstanding sergeant than just another officer. He would then go on to yeah. work as a bank security guard, where for 17 years he would be the living embodiment of the world's shittiest lottery ticket for anybody dumb enough to try to rob that bank. Yeah. Could you imagine just being some bank robber trying to get some quick cash and you run into the most gangster marine of all time? Nope. Hey, I'm just going to throw it out there. He didn't retire from being a bank security guard until 1936. And John Dillinger's bank robbing spree was from 1933 to 1934. So for a couple of years there, there was a significantly greater than 0% chance that the world almost got the ultimate clash yeah. of the bank robbing gangster and the most gangster Marine to ever live. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down in my book as the coolest thing to never actually happen. Yeah. In conclusion, Mark Twain is frequently accredited with the famous quote, it's not about the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. When in reality, it wasn't Mark Twain that said that first. It was actually Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star army general and the 34th president of the United States. Somebody that would have known good and well who Sergeant Major Dan Daly was. Legend. And I think that maybe, just maybe, he had that five foot six, 135 pound devil dog on his mind when he came up with that quote. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang. Out. Legend. I cannot believe that my favorite character from Starship Troopers is actually based off Dan Daly, and I had no idea. <laughs> Come on, you hate. You want to live forever? I expect the best. Legend. I give the best. So good. Beer. Here's the beer. There's the beer. There's the beer. Everybody loves the beer. Medal of Honor is usually given for jumping on grenade for context. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I don't have enough understanding of the context of Medal Honor as well as uh ability to earn multiple times and whether it should be that is that is conversations that people with far more knowledge than I do get to have and they get to rule on. But this was absolutely amazing. Foul Electric put on awesome. I didn't know about Dan Daly before this, so this was a great intro. This was absolutely nothing short of just epic. And thank you, Fat Electrician, for continuing to just make the absolute just most epic military history stuff. It's it's perfect.